The following is not authorized for use as an offer of sale or a solicitation of an offer to buy securities of Royal Resources Exploration Incorporated unless preceded or accompanied by a current prospectus which contains information concerning the company and the current public offering of the securities by it. It's a lonely land, desolate. It's a difficult life for what vegetation and animal life exists. The Spanish passed through this country. The pioneers trekked west over and around these undulating dunes. Few settled. The rolling, drifting surface promised little. Sand doesn't nourish crops, nor sustain cattle. If there wasn't much promise at top, there was below, and it had lain below for centuries. Geographers call this West Texas. Geologists Petroleum geologists know it as the Permian Basin. These are the stirrings of a new well. This well was going in not far from Monahans in Winkler County, West Texas. In the course of this film, we'll come back here from time to time to watch the derrick go up and the drill string go down. Lubricated with the hope and expectations only oil field adventurers know helped on its way by the brawn, the know-how, and yes, the language of the roughneck, colorful practitioner of the native art of wildcatting. But this particular well is not of itself important to our story. It is representative, symbolic. Our story concerns, rather, the broad area of wildcatting, the quest for natural resource riches in unproven territories, a hardy craft accounting for the early fortunes of the Rockefellers, Sinclair, the Phillips brothers, of J. Paul Getty and H. L. Hunt. Ours is the story of Royal Resources Exploration Incorporated, of a burgeoning national demand for more petroleum and the dwindling supplies from known reservoirs. It is a story of bold, exciting investment possibilities. You the investing public have a place in this story. In the 110 years since the birth of the oil industry in the United States, companies and independent operators have had to expand continuously to meet the energy demands of our highly industrialized society. Oil and or natural gas are now produced in 32 states and offshore locations. Today, three billion barrels of crude oil spring annually from more than 589,000 wells in this country. Still, it isn't enough to serve the sophisticated petrochemical industry which is responsible for so many modern-day necessities and luxury items, and to serve a nation on the move, fueled from more than 211,000 service stations. The United States is by far the world's leading producer and consumer of oil. The three billion barrels from under American soil represents 26% of the globe's yearly 11.9 billion barrels. In 1966, Americans consumed more than 4.3 billion barrels of petroleum, which accounted for 35% of the total world demand. Studies have indicated the United States will require three-fourths more energy in the 1965 to 1980 period than in the 15 years immediately preceding. The same studies break this down to two-thirds more oil than we now use, and 100% more natural gas. In a word, despite the vigorous growth of nuclear energy, coal, and water power, oil and natural gas will be called upon 
to satisfy more than 70% of the nation's total energy requirements in the period up to 1980. Petroleum exploration and production is expensive, tremendously expensive. The oil industry spends roughly 500 million annually on research. A complete drilling rig may represent an investment of $500,000 or more on land and up to $12 million for an offshore installation. In the petroleum industry, the bulk of its dollars, amounting to approximately $19 billion each year, is expended in developing resources already in hand. Within the next decade, the industry must have another nine to 10 billion to develop property interests alone. There is profit and response to national commitment in stepped up petroleum exploration. Royal Resources Exploration Incorporated was established to engage in imaginative exploration prospects, embracing the thesis that there is high risk and potential profit commensurate with that risk in wildcat investments in oil, gas, and other minerals. It is the goal of this company in which the individual investor can enjoy the tax shelter provided major petroleum companies to spread broadly the risk and offer exposure to possible major discoveries of resources through vision and diversification. The single investor is in an unlikely position to drill a successful wildcat. The individual or group of investors may be hard pressed to retain the geological and engineering expertise necessary to reduce the risk of failure in wildcatting. Oil is most often found in the beds of ancient seas. These seas once covered much of the continental land area we now know. In the organic theory, oil began with the remains of countless tiny creatures and plants that lived in the sea or washed down into it with mud and silt from streams. Prehistoric animals fell victim. This residue settled to the bottom of the ancient seas and piled up layer atop layer. As the old layers became buried deeper, they were compressed by the tremendous weight gathering above them. Under this pressure, heat was generated. Other factors, chemical, bacterial, and radioactive entered into the process. Together, these gradually transformed the organic matter into the compounds of hydrogen and carbon that we know as petroleum. In the last century, the cowboy and the Indian didn't always get along out here in West Texas. As the story goes, the Indians would, on occasion, ride out of these dunes to raise a little Ned with the folks in town. Then they'd split and head back into the sand hills. The boys in blue would give chase, but stopped short, overwhelmed by the sea of sand stretching to the horizon. Finally, one shave tail, destined to go far with the cavalry, reasoned that if the Indians could survive in these trackless wastes, he could too. He spurred old paint on and found the Indians living the good life amid a series of freshwater lakes. It seems, despite the apparent desolation, that the water table was not far below the surface. A little digging, an old yellowtail had himself a fine water hole. Water is necessary in drilling oil and gas wells. This paradoxical near-surface source in West Texas was a boon to the tool pusher, derrick men, lead tong, jar heads, and roughnecks assigned to drill a wildcat for royal resources. The risk of not hitting pay dirt here or anywhere may be great. The risk is reduced when you assemble an experienced energetic staff supported by a board of directors reflecting an all-American cross-section of able minds and careers. Let us introduce team members of Royal Resources Exploration and its management company, Royal Resources Corporation. Paul D. Bagwell of Detroit is chairman of the board. For 23 years, he was a teacher and administrator of Michigan State University. Mr. Bagwell has been active in petroleum exploration financing and management since 1961. The president of Royal Resources is an experienced oil man, George C. Hardin, Jr., 
a native of Oakwood, Texas. Mr. Hardin has compiled 27 years of oil and gas geological exploration and production work. In his tour as worldwide exploration supervisor for the Kerr-McGee Corporation of Oklahoma City, the firm's net oil production rose 127%. Its gas production increased 31.8%, and its total production, with gas converted to oil, grew by 70.8%. His goal for Royal Resources is simply stated. Uh, I am primarily an operations man, and even though I have some knowledge of the tax shelter benefits that an investor might receive from Royal, I am primarily interested in operating Royal at a hard dollar profit. We have put together an exploration team that is second to none in the exploration business. The exploration effort will be widespread, both geographically and economically. We will explore in the offshore area of the Gulf of Mexico, where wells are very expensive and the rewards are appropriately large. We will be exploring in some of the relatively shallow areas of Oklahoma, Kansas, and Texas. Uh, we will also be exploring in wide areas of the Rocky Mountains in Canada. We expect to have a uh, fairly large number of prospects in each program so that uh, the investor can get as great a spread statistically as possible. However, our primary objective in Royal is to find what we might call elephants, large oil fields. Uh, periodically, we will find large oil or gas fields that will return many times uh, as much as a hundred or more times what the initial risk for this prospect was. When we're going to find those, uh, I can't tell and neither can anyone else. We will be drilling a series of prospects that have the potential to produce this amount of return and a great many of them will be dry, but some of them will be productive. I think that the people who put their money in Royal are the people who are looking for a much larger return than simply a, um, an investment with some tax shelter. In other words, uh, we are looking at wildcat prospects from the standpoint of how much money are we spending, what do we have a chance to find, and what is the risk for finding it. Members of the Board of Directors of Royal Resources include Dr. Edward R. Annis of Miami, Florida, past president of the American Medical Association. J.L. Burke of Tulsa, Oklahoma, former president and chief executive officer of the pipeline subsidiary of Standard Oil Company of Indiana. Meyer Feldman, Washington attorney and former counsel to the president of the United States. Joseph J. Foss of Scottsdale, Arizona, television producer, Congressional Medal of Honor winner, former governor of South Dakota, and former commissioner of the American Football League. Stanley C. Hope of New York City is chairman of the board of Struthers Thermo Flood Corporation and former president of S.O. Standard Oil Company. Arthur J. C. Underhill of New York was a partner in Arthur Wiesenberger and Company for 12 years before his retirement in 1967. Chairman Bagwell, a past president of the United States Junior Chamber of Commerce, is an enthusiastic spokesman for Royal Resources. Well, the aim of the Royal Resources Exploration Program is to make money for our investors. Now, we do this in several ways. One is we provide investors with an excellent opportunity to invest income dollars that they would ordinarily have to pay out in taxes into a tax-sheltered investment where they get a tax write-off. This is an earned tax write-off under the tax laws passed by the Congress of the United States. Mr. Bagwell touched on the tax laws which afford advantages for oil, gas, and other natural resources exploration. How do these laws read? What are they? Well, they are not new, and this may come as a surprise to many persons. The federal tax laws, incentive laws, for well, remember we desperately need more and more petroleum reserves and our government fully realizes this. 
These laws stem from the Revenue Act of 1926. In the authoritative book, Oil and Gas Federal Income Taxation, the passage reads, for all practical purposes, the option to expense or capitalize in tangible drilling and development expenditures has existed since the first income tax statute. Regulation section 1.611-1, issued under the 1954 code, states in part, annual depletion deductions are allowed only to the owner of an economic interest in mineral deposits. An economic interest is possessed in every case in which the taxpayer has acquired by investment any interest in mineral in place. With royal resources, it is anticipated that at least 80% of each investment will be deductible from the plan holder's gross taxable income within 12 calendar months after investment. If we are going to learn the legal language governing the oil industry, perhaps we should also be exposed to the language of the field, that West Texas oil field. It is best understood that no drill string goes down without well, out here in the sand hills, it's strictly West Texas spoken here. Maybe that's a foreign tongue, language you don't fathom. But for straight talk, try this. Royal Resources is a vital, progressive exploration company, affording a unique opportunity for tax dollars to help create wide exposure to possible discoveries of oil, gas, and other natural resources. A program which, if successful, will produce growth of capital that is partially tax-free. And while we're talking about capital growth, that liquid running out of one of our wells is what makes it happen. The torch of fire thrown into the flowing oil burns up accumulated gas, preventing the possibility of a later explosion. Standard procedure is some colorful West Texas language followed by a handshake. It's a fascinating, exciting business. Let us tell you about it sometime. Uh -huh.